Hi there, it's Laura from My Home Matters, and today I'm going to be talking about how to make one of these DIY choir doormats. And this is based on getting ready for an in-person workshop that I was having and making the tutorial that would go in the kits for the folks that were picking up rather than doing it in person. So I apologize for the sound quality as I'm doing this in the garage. But without further ado, here we go. Okay, so for, hopefully, um, I don't have somebody pulling up the driveway. My kids are gonna be home. They get off work at four. But you're going to take your stencil and we're gonna apply it the same way we do to any piece of wood. But the difference between this stencil and other stencils that we do is that this is permanent backed um, so that it sticks better because it's really hard to stick to something like this. So you're gonna very slowly, just like we do with the rest of our stencils, Pull this off. So if you choose not to use this on your doormat, um, just keep in mind that this is permanent vinyl. So if you wanna use this on something else, um, unless you don't wanna have issues, it's, it's probably gonna cause some problems because of it being permanent. So it's not gonna cause issues for this because obviously it's not a solid background. So we wanted it to be stickier so that it will stay better. But take your time to try to get this backing off and you don't wanna rip the vinyl, so you wanna go slow and all the way to the end. And then once you have that off, which I forgot to pull the O out, the inner, inner part of my O, so you might have to keep backtracking a little bit to make sure that the vinyl stays on the front transfer paper. But there we go, finally. So it's just much stickier than the normal stuff that we're used to. Thank you, bud. Pull this, I'm gonna pull this little O. Actually, I think I'll wait till I have it on because I'm already messing things up. So I'm gonna put that back on. Thank you, are you okay? Ooh, I'm gonna find where I want it, I'm gonna press it on. For the most part, it's, it's gonna stay. So now you're gonna get a hold of a corner. Man, there is a fly that is biting me. Get a hold of that corner. And then you're going to slowly hold on to everything as you go by. You wanna take your time, because even though it's permanent backed, it's not gonna stick permanently to this, but it's gonna stick a lot better than our regular non-permanent vinyl. So you just have to go very, very slowly and continue to keep pressing down as you go. And I still have to go back and get that O that I forgot to weed. But the more detailed pieces you have, the more slowly you need to go. So you're gonna work your way, doing this the whole way across, and then we're going to start the painting. The nice thing about this, for those of you that are used to doing signs, so just keep pressing it down, is that we don't have to worry about any Mod Podge. Now I am gonna recommend a specific kind of brush for this. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute, but anything close to that. I mean, I'm gonna suggest a brush like this um, as opposed to a sponge applicator, 
because you're really gonna have trouble getting the paint to get into the carpet with that sponge applicator. But this one has a lot of detail, so it's gonna take me a little bit of time. But this, I am doing this for those that are also doing a porch sign. I'm doing this while my porch sign background is drying. Oh, I'm on the nose to the end, okay. So just go back, make sure everything looks like it's in place. You can also add some blue tape around the out, outer edge if you feel like you're too close to the edge and might get some paint on the carpet as you're painting it on. I think I'm gonna do that down here just in case. And then I'm gonna come back in here and get this piece of O there. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is, um, I think white, blue, and red, or red and blue. So I'm gonna grab my paint colors and I'll be back, but let me show you the kind of brush that I'm gonna use. It is more of a round brush like this. And like I said, somebody's coming home, but it's more like a solid brush like this, something like this even, but just not a sponge. Okay, so now let's say, Let's say I do up here. Say I'm gonna do the free um, in red. So I've got some red and I've got some white. I need to get some blue. I'm just going to push down and really try to push into the grain fibers, I should say. Of the carpet. I'm going to do free and red. And you can use regular acrylics for this. Um, I use a combination of different things. It seems that it really doesn't matter. Um, your best bet is to use your doormat in a place where it's not going to get completely exposed to the weather. Um, but you'll get a good you'll get a good bit of wear out of it i'm pretty sure no matter what kind of paint you use it's just not not super recommended to let it get out you know be out and saturated and any of these store bat bought they kind of fade over time so you wanna get you know as many years as you can out of it, but they're not lifetime as with any of the other ones that would be pre-printed. So that's what I'm doing. And then sometimes I go back in and I try to, without moving the stencil around, I try to really work it in. This brush is a little bit smaller than the one I showed you. Doesn't really matter. But you can see how a sponge dauber really isn't, or you know, an applic a makeup sponge isn't really gonna get the paint in there. You really need a brush that's gonna push it in there that has a little bit of surface area on it. But that's it. I'm gonna do red for free, or free and red. I'm gonna do brave and blue, I think. I'm gonna do red, white, and blue stars. And I think, I thought I was gonna do black, but I think I'm gonna do white lettering. I think. But I kinda of put my finger on as I'm getting these smaller areas and more delicate areas. But in between, you can kinda of hold the stencil and make sure you get in some of those extra little deeper pockets. But that's pretty much it. 
So I will come back when I'm a little further along and go from there. You can come back and you can do a second coat if you want, um, but obviously you need to do it all while your stencil is on. And you just wanna keep moving your finger around, holding the stencil while you're working in that area, just to make sure it doesn't stray too far, because you still want crisp lines. That is pretty much gonna cover my free. So like I said, I'll be back after I've done a little bit more and show you the rest. All right, so I'm down here to the stars. So I think I'm gonna do red, white, and blue. So we'll make this one blue. It takes a little bit of patience because of the background and because the stencil doesn't want to stick completely. I'm gonna do blue and then I'm gonna do, oh, I got my white paintbrush in my red. I'll do red over here. Well, the fly went away when I went off video and now that I came back on, he's back. He must be uh, wanting some camera time. So, I need a little bit more red. Red star, a white star. Sometimes if I have the space, like I do here, in the middle, I will like swirl it around a little bit to try to work it into the fibers, but you don't always have that space. So I don't know if I can use, this might have a little pink in it. And I'm hoping that my white lettering shows up. I just felt like it was more of a contrast than if I had done black lettering. But if you're doing a porch sign, you could kind of be working on this at the same time, you know, do a little bit of this, then go back and do a second coat of paint on the top of your board. Um, depends on what, what all you're doing. All right, now that little piece of the B wanted to come out, so I need to be done with that. But that's probably about the best I'm gonna get with the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. And it's gonna take me a few minutes because there's a lot of these pieces, but then I'm gonna go back in and pull all of these out, starting with the bigger and then moving to the smaller. That's about it for the carpet. Then you can always add, if you wanna tape off and make a border around the end, um, or if you salvage, if you're able to salvage some of your stars, you could do more stars around the outside. But I guess there's not as many people pieces as I thought. But that's about it for your doormat. So follow along if you wouldn't mind on this channel so that you see future videos. And you can also follow us on social media. Facebook is My Home Matters LLC, and Instagram and Pinterest are my underscore home underscore matters. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.